Are you looking for a vacation full of adventure? Today I'm going to show you where the action is. New Zealand. Welcome to Laura McKenzie's Traveler. Hi, I'm Laura McKenzie, and welcome to Queenstown, New Zealand. Definitely one of the more beautiful spots in the world, don't you think? They call Queenstown the adventure capital of the world, and believe me, that is the truth. You have bungee jumping, jet boating, heli skiing, paragliding, whatever outdoor activity you can think of, you can find it in Queenstown. New Zealand is a fantastic vacation destination, so join me as I show you all the highlights. Situated on the shores of beautiful Lake Wakatipu, Queenstown is surrounded by the majestic mountains they call the Remarkables in the center of New Zealand's South Island. So named because it was fit for Queen Victoria, Queenstown is now recognized as New Zealand's top travel destination and I think one of the friendliest cities in the world. Located down under, the seasons are reversed here, exactly opposite from the U.S. Check the calendar, you don't want to show up in shorts when it's snowing in July now, do you? But whether it's the long summer twilights from December to March, the brilliant autumn colors in April and May, or some of the world's best skiing and snowboarding conditions from June to September, Queenstown is definitely the action and adventure capital of New Zealand. Some say even the world. Well, Queenstown really has it all. We have jet boating, uh, where you can go in a speedboat down the Shotover River, doing 80 kilometres an hour, doing spins next to rock faces. Queenstown is actually the home of bungee jumping. Um, AJ Hackett Bungee and Henry Van Ash started bungee jumping back here uh, in 1988. And you can jump in heights ranging from 43 metres through to 134 metres. And also recently, obviously, with the uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy coming to Queenstown, there's a lot of promotional tours that are going out, having a look at the softer side of adventure that Queenstown does have to offer quite often we are perceived as, as a full-on adventure sort of playground and people tend to forget that we do have some of the finest walks in the world here as well. Queenstown Combos was a company that was really brought about due to the fact that people were coming to town and they wanted to do so many activities that are available in Queenstown but they just weren't able to organise their time to get the best out of it. So whether people are coming to Queenstown for a passive adventure or a full-on adventure weekend we're able to cater for all ages and fitness abilities. In Queenstown, you can do three or four adventures in a single day, not only making the most of your time, but your budget as well. But you have to leave the planning to the pros. And whether you're at the end of your rope, up a creek without a paddle, or just hanging around, the view is the same, spectacular. Visitors have been known to refer to Queenstown as a natural theme park because of the incredible variety of outdoor activities to choose from. The geography here is what makes it so extraordinary. Just look at that scenery. It's this unique setting that's made Queenstown famous the world over. Where else in the world can you find mountains, lakes, rivers, forests, and historic sites all within a short distance of each other? This must be why film director Peter Jackson used Queenstown as a natural soundstage for the filming of his Academy Award winning Lord of the Rings trilogy. For the less adventurous, Queenstown boasts a variety of other activities as well. But I can relax when I die. I'm an adventure mama, and I'm ready to hit the river. You coming with me? Oh, yeah. The most famous adventure in Queenstown is a jet boat ride on the Shotover River. What's a jet boat? Trust me, it's the thrill of a lifetime. From what I understand, we're going to get a little bit wet. So they give you a big rain poncho, and as with any adventure on the water, got to think safety, so we have a life jacket. So once we're suited up, we're just about ready to go. One thing you should definitely bring, a warm jacket and sunglasses, because the wind's going to whip your eyes. And from what I understand, we're in for one heck of a ride. Just 
taking a break. You know what's great about this boat? The bars are heated. You hang on, your hands are warm. It's really fun. We're gonna do a few spins now. Let's see this. about these boats, they're very special. Uh, we've got a two water jets on the back of the boat, and um, that's the part that was invented in New Zealand in the 1950s, and uh, they're just pumps, they pump water, um, 22,000 litres a minute each, and that's what's actually pushing us forward, and the water jets are powered by two um, supercharged V6 Buick motors. Tell me about the ride we just did, um, how fast we go, and what we can expect on a ride today. Well, our speed is close to 80 kilometres now, um, yeah, it's about 50 miles an hour. Uh, we're doing a whole lot of turns, big turns there, going pretty close to the rock. Generally having a good time, really, trying to stay dry as we do it. Well, we've had a bit of a rest. I think I'm ready to go out and get sprayed again. Yeah, okay. let's get into it. Here's a tip, local outfitters will arrange all aspects of your adventures, including transportation to and from your hotel, equipment and special clothing, but you have to bring your own closed toed shoes. Laura McKenzie's Traveler, we'll be right back. Welcome back, and for more information on New Zealand, go to lauramackenzietv.com. Had enough action? Not me. We're ready for part two of our Queenstown combo. In the months without snow, Queenstown has another way for you to part with your inhibitions. It's called the luge. Getting to the top of the hill is almost as fun as careening back down it. Almost. Ah, there's nothing like the thrill of speeding downhill. With the sun at your back and the wind in your hair, I mean helmet, Advanced track, here I come. <laughs> and if you're afraid of heights, just focus on the magnificent view and breathe in the fresh air. Then scream your guts out. Okay, ready for an extreme adventure? How about some bungee jumping? Invented right here by New Zealander A.J. Hackett, bungee jumping is just another example of Kiwi ingenuity. It's kind of like flying. So free, so fun, so frightening. So forget it. Here it is, the little rubber cord that started the bungee craze from that bridge right over there. You know what's interesting? After 500 jumps, they cut up the cord into souvenirs like this one. Check it out. Okay, maybe if I knew a little more about it, I wouldn't be so petrified. So, let's go right to the source, to the company that was founded by the inventor of bungee jumping, A.J. Hackett Bungee. With over one million jumps under their belt, they're also the world's first bungee operator to be awarded the prestigious S mark for quality and safety. Phew, I was hoping S didn't stand for stupid. Phil, is this the first place they had the bungee here in New Zealand? This is the first full-time site in New Zealand. Tell me a little bit about the history. Um, AJ and Henry, they're the two co-founders of Bungie. They got together, they were speed skiers, a little crazy. And uh, they saw some video of guys jumping on vines in um, Vanuatu, Pentecost Islands, and thought, that's cool, how'd you do that? What they basically did was come up with a way of making it safe and fun. Tell me about the bungee itself. What's it made of? It's made of rubber, and we build them here. Now, I noticed that you can drop somebody um, within a meter into the water, above the water, whatever they want. How do you do the calculations? We've, we've got a formula we work with. However, that formula is only as good as the jump. So, 95%, we can get you there. The last 5% is up to you. That all sounds good, but is it safe? Initially, you've got a body harness on. That's a redundant system. That's in case. After that, 
You've got a nylon strap that's wrapped in a special way around your ankles, which gets tighter when the weight comes on. That's then clipped to two carabiners, which are attached to the bungee. So it's safe. OK, maybe it's safe, but what happens after you jump? Do they just leave you dangling there? Well, I took the long way down and found out they have these recovery boats tethered to the shore that retrieve the jumpers. Note, I said retrieve and not rescue. We're tethered onto the, uh, the shore here. The jumper, once as if the uh, bridge is then lowered down to a certain height and then we'll get taken down with the current. Give them a large pole, they grab hold of that and then we pull ourselves back up to this uh, ramp here. I asked Binya what happens if the boat gets out of position. Oh yeah, it's just a bit of timing, uh, mistiming. So we've just got a couple of paddles here, a couple of strokes and we're back in their, uh, in their position. Okay, now that I'm feeling a bit more secure about this, back to the top. Okay, so you can have a jump? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Excellent. Yeah, I'm thinking mm -hmm. about it. While I thought about it, I asked Bill if he had any last minute advice for new jumpers. Just go quickly and just dive big. The bigger the better. Maybe I'll just watch one more jumper before I commit. Wow, it really looks like fun. Let's find out. It was really exhilarating, but I hardly had time to enjoy it. It was so fast. It was like all of a sudden, wow, and then ooh, my face just blew up. <laughs> I asked Sarah if she'd do it again. Yeah, I might even touch the water. Okay, I'm convinced. Strap me in, boys. I'm ready to jump. What? Out of time? But, oh, darn. Well, maybe next time. No, really. Here's a tip. No visa is required for entry up to three months, but your passport must be valid for at least three months beyond the date you intend to leave New Zealand. Laura McKenzie's Traveler. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and for more information on New Zealand, go to lauramackenzietv.com. It's time for another adventure. Hop in. Where can you get the best view of the bottom of the world? By getting on top of it, of course. Helicopter sightseeing flights are affordable and definitely an incredible adventure. The helicopter can drop you at the top of the mountain. You can get out, take pictures, and just enjoy that incredible view. But now it's time to get out of the wind and finish the ride. Let's go. Whether you're heli fishing, sightseeing, or just trying to get from here to there, helicopters in Queenstown are easy to book, safe, and very exciting. Now that was fun. A great adventure. Okay, I'm ready for something a little more down to earth now. Middle Earth, that is. For over 15 years, Nomad Safaris have been conducting four-wheel drive tours in the heart of the New Zealand high country. With the success of the Lord of the Rings films, Nomad has found a new niche off-road tours of the rugged and dramatic countryside that were the backgrounds and locations featured in the films. The new tours are called, what else, Safari of the Rings. What we're doing at uh, Nomad is, uh, is aiming at the um, sellable adventure junkies, the people who want more out of their experience than, than a quick thrill. It's just uh, half a dozen people in the vehicle uh, with a very knowledge knowledgeable guide talking about the area whilst driving in this amazing countryside and through this uh, amazing road. But if you think this is just a sightseeing tour, uh-uh. It's total immersion into what New Zealand has to offer. No matter which direction you look in, there's something spectacular at the end of your gaze. If I wasn't seeing it for myself, I'd swear I was back in Hollywood on a movie set. Well, I guess I kind of am. <laughs> Not a bad view. What else are we going to see today? We'll uh, head down towards Arrowtown, which is off there in the distance, which is where the Fort of Bruin was recorded. We're going to follow the, uh, the Kaladau River just here, which is where all the, uh, the Pillar of the Kings for the first movie of Lord of the Rings were done. Old Queenstown here, very few people, small population. You've got a 26 million year old landscape. I mean, you look out here and it looks almost medieval. It looks, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years old. 
You can easily see why filmmakers choose this location. Nice and simple and gorgeous. Driving along the countryside, you forget what year it is. It's hard to imagine there are actually towns out here. And then all of a sudden, there's Arrowtown. Arrowtown is exactly what you'd expect an old gold mining town to look like. But you know what makes it different? This is the real thing. A small town with a true village atmosphere. Arrowtown hit its boom in 1862 when thousands of miners arrived after gold was discovered in the Arrow River. As the Arrow River became famous as one of the world's richest sources of alluvial gold, Arrowtown earned itself a reputation as being a wild and lawless town. But today it's a sleepy little place with quaint shops and gourmet restaurants and a great place to spend a quiet afternoon. After lunch, we return the Range Rover to the river for a little gold rush of our own. While panning for gold in the Arrow River may not be as profitable as it once was, it's still a lot of fun and the kids love it. Is there still gold in this here river? There certainly is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they found gold here in 1862, it started the rush. We still find gold here uh, every day when we come up the river, Nomad. Do you really? So uh, we'll see if we can find some now. Is it real shiny gold like, like a nugget or do you have to oh. really look? We find nuggets now and again. A few months ago, a girl got a nice nugget the size of the top of my thumb. You're joking. No, I'm not. Did you get to keep it? Yeah. So what you find now is yours, girls. Now let's get into it. The technique for gold digging hasn't changed in over 100 years, and there's definitely a method to the mining. The gold's the heaviest, the heaviest compound of the river, and so you find it generally at the bottom of the river. Best thing to do is get your pan full of water, nice and full of water. We give it a good swirl. We give that a good shake. The heaviest material in there is going to go to the bottom of the pan. And that's the gold. I'm going to give that a shake now. Now, by shaking this, any gold flecks are going to be sitting right at the bottom of my pan. So I'm going to hold it on this angle now. I'm going to swirl around and see what we've got in the top of the pan here. Whew. Come on, baby. Anything? I don't think so this time, Laura. But it always pays to double check. I think it's going to take a few minutes for us to find a little bit of gold, so why don't you continue on without us? <laughs> Here's a tip. At Customs, you may be required to provide proof of onward travel, like an airline ticket, plus evidence that you can financially support yourself while in New Zealand. Laura McKenzie's Traveler will be right back. Welcome back, and for more information on New Zealand, go to lauramackenzietv.com. What could be better than all these great adventures in Queenstown? Finding a great hotel close to the action in Queenstown. And trust me, I found a beauty. Nestled between the spectacular Shotover River and the majestic Coronet Peak, Nugget Point Resort is close enough to Queenstown for convenience, yet remote enough to make you feel like you're a world away. And with their own private heliport, getting there can be almost as much fun as staying there. Surrounded by the natural grandeur of the Queenstown region, monumental rock formations, soaring evergreens, and rushing water, Nugget Point is the perfect vacation destination. And they've got an award to prove it. This year, we were honored to receive the Condé Nast Gold Award for 2004, the only resort in Queenstown to be awarded the, the Gold Award, which I think saves um, a whole heap to my team here at Nugget Point. We are an extremely friendly resort. We have an abundance of facilities. We are in the heart of the adrenaline-packed Queenstown, which is so well known, and is becoming, of course, an international resort in its own right. But wait, remember I told you earlier? This is the adventure capital of the world, and I've saved the best for last. Hey, check it out. Talk about being on the cutting edge of adventure. These guys over here do para-bungee. They've combined parasailing, you know, the boat that takes the parachute up and you fly around the harbor, with bungee jumping. You bungee jump from the top of the parachute. These guys are crazy. I'm sure the view is fantastic from up there, but I'm sorry, that's just a little too adventuresome for me. There he goes. There goes my stomach. Just a bit too extreme. I'm out of here. 
What an incredible vacation destination. Can you believe all the outdoor activities they have to choose from here? Where else in the world can you find such beautiful country with so much to do all in one place? Queenstown is definitely the adventure capital of the world. So on the Laura McKenzie scale of one to 10, I give hotels an eight, food seven, shopping five, getting around seven, sports and activities a 10. Would I come back? Oh yeah, I'm an adrenaline junkie. Man, I am pooped. I have never been so tired having so much fun in my entire life. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of New Zealand with me and that you'll join me again next time from another terrific destination somewhere else around the world. From Queenstown on the South Island, I'm Laura McKenzie. Bye-bye.